Hello, I'm Javis Lewis and in this episode I'm going to show you how to create a dolly zoom in Das Studio. That's this kind of weird animation in which a character seemingly stays in the same size whereas the background around him changes perspective. And of course that's created with the kind of camera trick that was first conceived by a cameraman in the second unit at Paramount Pictures called Ermin Roberts and uh, the effect was first used in the movie Vertigo by Alfred Hitchcock. He since used it in uh, Marnie for dramatic effect and Steven Spielberg used it in Jaws as well. It's that scene where Roy Scheider sits on the beach and uh, his wife behind him and the first shark attack happens and the camera kind of weirdly zooms in. He doesn't change size but it's the effect as if the whole world is kind of shifting perspective around you. It's a very exciting camera effect and we're going to see how to do that in Das Studio today. It's uh, going to be, uh, animations are always going to be a lot of setups so I think I'm going to split this video into two parts. In the first part we're going to do the actual setup so that we have a set and a character sitting in that set and in the second part we're going to go to work with the actual camera animation. So uh, I'm going to use the Stonemason downtown loft living area available from Das Studio. It's a very very nice set. He's put a lot of effort into that. There's a very detailed inner apartment with some outdoor houses built around it. It looks a bit like New York. And we're going to use Rhiannon's Ella character for that, available from Renderosity, along with the Crux Obsession outfit, also available from Renderosity. And we're going to use the Chase hair prop by Aprilish as the hair. There we go. And other than that, we're going to do all that in Das Studio 4.10. Let's have a look how to do that. Let's load the set first. And that's going to be in my Smart Content tab under Environments. And there it is, Downtown Loft Living Area. And it's available as 3D Light Set and iRay Set. We're going to use iRay, of course, for this. Once it's in, the other thing I want to change is to get this uh, cinematic feel. I'm going to use 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So under render settings, I'm going to switch that over instantly under to, it doesn't have to be ultra HD. It could just be full HD. That'll be fine there. And that'll give us that kind of aspect ratio there. If I stick with my perspective zoom, I can zoom out a little bit. And as is often the case with these full immersive sets, I mean, in fact, let me change that aspect ratio uh, off. Let me just, this under the show aspect frame, let's switch that off so we can tumble around the set. And then you can see how stonemasons actually built that. So this white box in the middle, that's actually our apartment. And these houses around it, those are very interesting for dramatic effect if you want to have a shot from the inside you ha always have some kind of background showing on the outside it's not quite a full city set but it's certainly something that we can make use of or we could I guess but I guess I'm, I'm not entirely sure if we're going to see any of that for our shot I'm envisioning this to be inside the apartment of course and so that I can shoot through this I think I'm gonna have to remove this wall so I'm going to select that here and in my scene tab I can see that this is like New York L wall 05 so if I go and remove that then that goes away I'm going to select this uh, wall 4 is also going to go away so that's where I'm going to go in with my with my camera here there's also these pictures I can get rid of. So you basically select whatever you don't want to see and then uh, click that little eyeball icon to remove those things. Yeah, so some some props are still floating around there, but I don't think we're going to we're going to see much of it. So I'm envisioning for my character to sit here at the table. Perhaps we're going to grab one of these chairs and pull it out and spin it around like so and my character is going to sit on there and we're going to see the apartment in the background so i'm just going to go and set that shot up almost like that let's see if we can bring the character in so we can get the sitting position on there as well from the smart content tab i'm going to go over to my figures and i'm going to go and select genesis 3 for this Genesis 3 female. She loads somewhere in the background there. 
and then perhaps I'm going to go and close all the rest of the set down again select my Genesis female character and go and put the outfit on that's going to be on the content tab because that's a renderosity product that's not going to be available in the smart content tab under Genesis 3 female under clothing under Rhiannon we have Crux obsession and we're going to go and put all these items on our character that's that with the character still selected to apply the custom character we're going to stay on the content library tab and we're going to go under characters perhaps close that down under characters there's Rhiannon again under Ella we're going to go and hit uh, just a, a character here and inject her head and her body and then under iRay we can go and apply the iRay materials so that should be good still with the character selected there is some poses I want to explore and they are currently under the poses tab also there this is something from Danny and Marfono called the white spring collection it's also available from renderosity by the way and I think one of these poses is going to be nice here the sitting number three or four let's see what that looks like uh, turn limits off is good uh, there we go let's move that character all the way over to the chair and turn her around towards the camera like this right and uh, we're going to put some hair on her as well that's on the smart content tab by the way so that's under hair props and there'll be chase hair for the genesis 3 female there it is and with the hair selected we can also pick something of a different hair color here under materials eye ray perhaps i'm going to go and pick that kind of blue color here. see what that's like okay now let's open our timeline here already so that we get uh, ready for when we're going to create that animation and uh, what i want to do is essentially create a six second animation so i'm going to type that in already under total i'm going to go uh, so six seconds times 30 frames a second if we stick with 30 with 30 frames a second then that's about 180 frames so let's type in 181 so that we have an actual duration of 180 frames plus one frame which we can use as the last frame to put a keyframe in so we have the first frame and we have the last frame currently i'm going to ignore everything and make sure my playhead is parked on the first frame that's very important when it comes to dealing with animations and the next thing i'm going to do with this almost framed up here i'm going to create a camera so under create new camera copy active viewport perspective view that's important i'll go and switch over to that camera so we can frame up the first shot and then the last shot so the first shot give it a keyframe go to the last frame of the animation give that a keyframe and then everything else in the middle should be interpolated let's do that we're not going to set any other keyframes if we can get away with that so <laughs> with uh, the camera one selected I'm going to go over and select my parameters tab here and in it we've got the focal distance here that's cool we're not going to worry about that for now but what we will worry about is the focal length so I'm going to set this up so that I'm going to start uh, on the on the first frame with a very wide shot and the idea is that I'm going to set a very short focal length so therefore I get a fairly distorted perspective not too distorted but that means that I can be closer to the character with a lot more stuff showing so uh, I'm going to go and select something like 28 millimeters it's kind of a photography thing 28 millimeters and then I'm going to use my mouse wheel to dolly towards the character in fact to be able to see what i'm gonna see on the render i'm gonna head over and switch on my aspect frame again and then i guess with the character selected it's going to be easier so now the camera will rotate around her something like that a mid shot and i think i'm going to keep it like that keep the mid shot like that perhaps slightly further off center maybe maybe something like that maybe something like that and i'll try and keep her in the same shot for the last position of our animation as well 
And one thing I've showed you in previous things is how to select these eyes here. I'm going to do that and switch over back to the perspective view. I'm going to select her eyes and I'm going to make sure they are pointing at the camera. So should we move the camera between the first frame and the last frame, then her eyes will always follow the camera. It's going to be very exciting. So right click and select the left eye and under the parameters tab here under MISC, we can go and point that at camera one. Uh, likewise, the other eye, let's go and select that and point that also at camera one. This isn't going to have any effect due to a small bug in Death Studio that probably won't be ever fixed uh, unless we go back to the camera and move the camera just a little bit. And now we can see that the eyes move. There we go. That's cool. To make sure we have a keyframe here, let's head over to the timeline and click on that little plus icon here. That's perfect. And now let's go and go to the last frame of our animation, which is frame number 181. And now we're going to reset up the camera, reposition the camera. It's very important that we go and, oh, actually, I've made a massive mistake here because my right eye was selected when I set the keyframe. So that's a big, big no-no. So um, let's go back to the first frame. I shouldn't have done that. It's kind of interesting that this happened because this is one of those mistakes that always creeps in when you deal with animations. Whichever item is selected in the scene tab, that's what creates the keyframes when you select keyframes. So I'm glad I haven't done anything else. So with that still selected, head on that little X icon here and delete the current keyframe. Very important. Don't think I've done any on the left eye, just in case if I have done that, I'm gonna create, I'm gonna click the X icon there as well so that nothing is um, selected. Now with all, with all that close, let me select the camera. And oh, there we go. Now I think there's something with the eyes that isn't quite working. No, actually it is working, it's perfect. Okay, cool. Just checking, just checking. The eyes seem to be working fine. It's all about the eyes, isn't it? Right. Okay, so this, uh, this is that. And with that camera selected, I'm now gonna hit the plus sign and select the keyframe there, perfect. Now, if I go and move my camera all the way to frame 181, uh, with the camera still selected on the parameters tab, let's have a look at the camera tab here. And this is where we can set the focal length. And I wanna go and set the focal length to something much, much closer. So I'm now gonna physically zoom in much further than I want to, probably about 200 millimeters. So that's uh, how far I would see into the, into the distance if I, if I do that. And now I'm, coming, I'm kind of, the, posi the position of the camera is still fairly close to the character with a wide or short focal length. So now I've made the focal length a lot wider, cropping my field of view, and now I'm gonna go back, physically go back with the camera. And I'll just do that with the mouse button. So I'll, I'll uh, move that back like so. And you can see that the eyes still move with me. They still look at the camera, which is kind of cool. I can even, if I wanted to, I can even just select the character and still move the camera up or down a little bit. So uh, anything that frames her up nicely, and perhaps do that. So we get, we mainly move away, but we're zooming in just a tiny amount, whereas the background completely changes. So that's interesting there. Okay, let's see what happens if we select the keyframe. Once again, select the camera, hit the plus icon here on the timeline to create a keyframe here. And now what should happen, what I'm kind of expecting to happen is when I move that slider around, I think what I, sh what I should see is my picture changing dramatic perspective. Let's see if I'm correct. Um, yes, that happens, but it's completely weird and I really don't know what's happened there. I don't know where that complete tumbling around is coming from. That is not something I've, I've done there. I really don't know where that came from. Maybe we can, maybe there's a way we can change that. So uh, let's see what's happening here. If we go and keep the camera selected and just have a look at the top view, and move that out a bit and perhaps select the ceiling here and get rid of it so we can get an accurate uh, view of what is happening here. So there's my camera that's moving in and out. Let's go and move that. Uh, further over here. 
So we can see what's happening to my camera here, but I can also see that the camera is turning somehow. I really don't know why. It makes, makes zero sense because I, I just I just didn't do that, did I? So <laughs> let's uh, let's not panic about this. Let's go and select the camera and go under the general transformations here and just see which values are freaking out. So it's the X rotate that has an issue. Okay, so if we just assume the first on, on the first frame to fix this, uh, to go on to the first frame and say 177 was, was, the, was the kind of the correct starting point X value. Now we go to the last frame and also make that 177. If uh, that's what it takes, then that's what it takes. So that's a fixed value. There's also Y rotate and a tiny bit of Z rotate, but I think that's okay. I think we can leave those in place. Let's see what this looks like looking through the camera. Hopefully there's nothing that's being freaked out. No, look at that. It's very interesting. It's almost, it's it's now kind of shifted the, the last frame. So it's it's, Kind of getting there you can see what's happening to the background perspective but i'm not entirely happy with where the last frame is taking me so that's kind of it's a little bit too far this is not what i wanted so let me just uh, select that camera on the last frame i'm just going to reframe the character like so and now i'm going to hit that plus button again to kind of lock that keyframe in let's see if that worked Yes, it worked. So it looks freaky. It's maybe I've zoomed in a little bit too much. We can always adjust that value if that's uh, if that's too much. But I think it just goes to show what is possible with that effect. And the character kind of stays almost at the same size, at the same uh, location in the frame. It's kind of a creepy animation there. Very cool. So I think what I'm also going to do is to add even more creepiness to this on the last frame. I'm going to go and select the character's uh, head here and I'm going to give her a little bit of an expression so that she goes that she changes her expression just a little bit that will undermine what we're what we're currently seeing there. So with that selected under post controls in the head under expressions. Let's see, perhaps just give her a little bit of confidence there, just a little bit. That should do it. And once again, to lock that in, hit the plus character. Some programs when they do animation, I'm not entirely sure actually about that studio. As soon as you change a parameter, they already lock that in as a new keyframe. I don't really know what that studio does. I, it's, it's always good to just do this manually in my opinion, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, do let me know in the comments if you know what that studio does there. So now in addition to the camera position, we also see that the character changes expression a little bit. And you can see that this value is kind of going up here. So if I go back to the first frame, you can see that that value is counting to zero. And when I can't, when I switch that timeline back to the last one, it kind of counts up again. In fact, let's just, let's just see what it does, shall we? If I go and increase that a little bit, what happens if I don't hit the plus sign? I guess that value is still locked in. So I guess Dash Studio is one of those programs as well that just creates a keyframe as soon as you change a value. Learn something new there. Okay, that's it for this video. Let us do a bit of lighting and then start rendering this animation out and we'll see what it looks like in the final render. Join me for that. Thank you so much for watching.